Okay, hi, I'm Bob Rosania. We're still here at the University of Nevada at Reno, and we're with Takako and her husband Peter. Hi. You may have seen them online. Uh, Peter is on the cutting edge of doing uh, epigenetic research for FSHD and I guess other neuromuscular potentially disorders. Yeah. And Takako is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Right? <laughs> so yeah, what's, yeah. what's fascinating is uh, Takako has come up with a very simple and inexpensive test to potentially measure or determine uh, not only that you have FSHD, but perhaps the severity of mm -hmm. allele deletion. Is that what I understand? It, uh, deletion it may be strong, things, hopefully yeah. at some point we'll develop yeah. to that point. But right now it's a diagnostic for FSHD1, FSHD2, or mm -hmm. um, help non-FSHD, not necessarily help, but non-FSHD. And this would be an alternative to a DNA test, which can take time. Very expensive, insurance mm -hmm. typically doesn't cover it. And so this is gonna be an inexpensive test. And therefore, I think that the belief is that FSHT in particular, the prevalence is uh, not really fully understood. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. We, we might just add that at this point, currently it's a stage, it's a research test. It is not an uh, approved um, diagnostic test for FSHT at this yet. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of trying to um, establish a CLIA approved laboratory yeah. here at UNR. To make it an approved test, but so it's currently a research test. Got it understood. Mm -hmm. And I have already two DNA tests that Peter at least looked at one of them. So whether we would do some correlation between what that test showed yeah, and what yeah. you right. potentially yeah. Yeah. already a confirmed FSHD. Yeah. So, right. Mm -hmm. right. So, okay, here we go. Yeah. All right. Well, I, mean, I don't know if you want to be able to get <laughs> need, uh, saliva up to the line here. And then once you do it, you pop the top on, and that's a stabilization solution. Okay, I'm going to turn my back for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, uh, um, we are interested in epigenetic difference between patient and then uh, healthy. So we started doing this DNA-based uh, menstruation test. And then there was a patient meeting. Uh, we talked to uh, actual patient how hard to get the blood out sometime. Uh, and expensive. They, yeah, mm -hmm. and expensive, and then also, you know, for little kids, you get the five mil, ten mil blood, it's a lot of work, uh, and then sometimes patients just faint and then cannot come back for a long time um, by the, the blood draw, so, and then uh, there was other clinician talking about, oh, we do that the kind of DNA test and then saliva, DNA and then oh we have the you know DNA kind of test for menstruation uh, status uh, we can probably do that in uh, saliva. Right. Re from yeah. a research standpoint, we saw it was uh, we always able to identify FSHD one, FSHD two, and control just you mm -hmm. know just using research samples and realize oh you can do this from saliva. Yeah, so uh, we compare that the menstruation status between blood and then saliva. Uh, we know already blood and then muscle menstruation status match up. So now the question is, so must, uh, that the blood and then saliva are gonna match up or not? And then we publish this and they actually Push match up. Yeah. So uh, this is harder than a urine test, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all loaded in there. Yeah. So what now the oh, solution. it's the pressure is kicking in there. And then all right, so we just have the cap. You just then and it, just it, it takes only on two days. Cap to uh, get the results from this? Yeah, we probably should be. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, if we really pushed it, we could do it in two days. Now we, typically, it, it's about a week. We yeah. just, um, yeah. So this is a stabilization solution. So the DNA immediately, this is non-infectious, non hazardous So it really, so there's no mm -hmm. concerns. And there you go, there's your mm. genomic DNA from yeah. your salivas in there. Interesting. And the great thing is we could actually, you can send this kit anywhere in the world and it's stable at room temperature for, they say up to five years. Wow. It goes by regular mail, so you don't need FedEx, mm -hmm. you don't need dry ice. You Unlike send, blood, which has a very short life. Right, and you need mm -hmm. to have it get it immediately. So yeah. you can send these kits out to patients, they can have family members, they can provide the sample and send it back and we'll be able, so we're hoping to get this established um, as a as an approved diagnostic, you know that, mm -hmm. that takes some time and a lot of. But right now, as a research test, it, it's um, it's, it's proven to be quite quite informative. Maybe yeah. we'll see it in yeah. CVS or Walgreens one day as a self test. <laughs>